What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video with the boy Thick Whips. Today we're talking about the 340. I had a lot of people in one of my previous videos. I think some new people who were here that were just wondering what it's done to this car. So I'm going to try and keep this as brief as possible. I'm just going to give you like a quick rundown of what my car has and then also what I think that you could do to your 340. You don't have to do everything that I did to make the kind of power I'm making and for it to drive the way that it drives. But I'll give you guys a few suggestions if you don't want to spend as much as I did. Alright, so here it is. 2016 BMW 340 with of course the V58 motor in it. We'll just start with the exterior stuff because I guess that's like the easiest and most basic stuff. I'm running the VS5 RS Apex wheels in satin black. These are 18s all around. I have all the sizes and everything listed down below. Tires are the Michelin Pilot Super Sports 4S's. I also upgraded the brakes to the M Performance brake kit. Just a little bit bigger than the ones that came on this car and of course they look a lot nicer. I'm running the Motorsport Hardware uh, stud conversion kit which I pretty much put on all my cars. It's just a lot easier when you're taking off and putting on different wheels. I wouldn't really call these a mod, but they're kind of cool. Um, the floating center caps. These are the shadow line version from American Panda. Carbon fiber, I'm running the Varus carbon fiber front lip. I'm running the Souvenir, I think they're like the V2 side skirt, carbon fiber side skirt extensions. Keys sent these out. These are the carbon fiber, just like normal OEM-ish looking carbon fiber mirror caps. The roof is wrapped in gloss black by STEC PPF. I do have a carbon fiber shark fin cover. I believe that's also by Souvenir. And then I have, of course, the Souvenir carbon fiber rear bumper splitters. This is the Turner Motorsports carbon fiber high kick split. I think it's just the best option for these cars in my opinion being that this is a 2016 340 It is an LCI model. So it does have the LCI taillights, which I just prefer over the GTS taillights GTS are cool But I just think for the f30 I think the GTS's are just doing a little too much So I prefer these the rear carbon diffuser is by keys motorsports Which finishes off the all of the carbon fiber on the car That's all I have for carbon fiber as far as suspension the car is sitting on KW v2 coilovers I've ran the KW v3s on my Supra and I also run them on my e30 M3 and I think that the V2s are plenty for this car you really don't need to have adjustable compression and rebound for a car that's just like street driven if you're gonna do like a track setup maybe V3 is a, probably worth it but for this car I, I really don't think you need to go that far for the hood uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys see that I still have the GTS hood on. So for the hood, I actually have the, this is the GTS hood by Souvenir. I'm gonna run off on a little bit of a rant, nothing too crazy. I actually spent about four hours in the garage today. I fixed the fitment on my hood. It was quite the task, but I got it done. And um, honestly, I'm, I'm happy with it now. I don't hate the way that this looks. I actually think it's a really good option for these cars. It's a very clean and simple hood, especially on white. You don't really see like as much of the contour. Like you really can't see much of like the bulging or anything thing on a white car on the darker cars it's very pronounced but ever since i was able to fix the fitment of this um i'm i'm cool with it that was my really my only qualm with it was the fitment i actually dig the way that it looks um so i am gonna leave that on my car actually came with the gloss black kidney grills uh, a lot of people are like oh do the double slatted m1s i don't really see a reason why to do that i think these look completely fine in gloss black i also have the american panda chatelain badges on the car too which i think look really good and then as far as exterior that's really it um the window tint came on the car i think it's like 30 percent or 20 percent, something like that it's not too crazy it looks really dark right now but it's not but let's get into the performance stuff and then we'll talk a little bit about um interior things that i did we'll start with the turbo the turbo that i'm running is the dynamic auto works flow max 2.5 plus turbo it has been great thus far i haven't had any issues with this turbo the car currently puts down 620 wheel horsepower and like 580 something torque current charge pipe setup is apex built these are titanium charge pipes which i really dig i think they just look sick um, charge pipes really aren't like a necessity we'll talk a little bit more about that later intake is an mst cold air intake i've always liked the msts they look rather oem ish they sound really good and they're pretty affordable and at the end of the day, it's really just an air intake, so you don't need to go too crazy on that. I am running the Dorch Stage 2 high pressure fuel pump, and the car is currently on a custom tune by CB919. His name is Chris. He's out here in North Carolina, and he tunes only N54s and B58s. Super good tuner, highly recommended. I have a pump gas tune and an E50 tune, but literally since I got it tuned, I've only been running the car on E blend. Just prefer it. Once you go E, you really don't go back. The downpipe is a Catalyst downpipe by CTS Turbo. It did have some other kind of catalyst downpipe on it when I bought it, but it was like a hunk of junk and fit like ass, so I took it off. Put the CTS turbo catalyst downpipe on, and then that is running into an AFE um, full cat pack exhaust system. When I have the valves open, it's completely open, it's straight piped, but then when I have the valves closed, it's running through the muffler back here. 
what the exhaust looks like. I actually really like this exhaust. It's pretty tame. My super exhaust was Valtronic Designs, which is also like a very sick exhaust. It's valved, obviously, and you can like hook it up to your mirror buttons and do all this cool shit. But the tone of it was like really, really loud when it was open. And I actually prefer the tone of this one over that one, only because it's not as rowdy, like it's not as loud. It's just a little bit more refined in my opinion. So I think that this one sounds better in the end. And then the transmission has XHP stage three, and that is literally it. That's all I have for performance modifications to put this car at 620 wheel and 580, I can't remember what it was, like 583, 587 or something, pound feet of torque. But other than that, that's it. And it's that's really how simple it is to modify these cars and just make them, in my opinion, look pretty good and drive really good. As far as the interior, I did get a custom wheel by Aza Auto Wheel, which I have them do all my steering wheels. And I think this thing looks just absolutely mental. It's got Alcantara up top and on the bottom, and then it's got perforated leather in here, cut out for your thumbs it's got the m stitching all the way around with the carbon fiber centerpiece and then i did retrofit the mn laser cutting driving mode buttons so m1 and m2 actually control the different driving modes similar to the function down there but i just have it right here at my steering wheel which is a little bit easier i also have the digital p3 vent gauge which has a lot of useful features in it I made an entire video on it, make sure you check it out. Oh, I should probably also mention that the tune is an MHD tune. So I'm running on the MHD platform, but it is a custom tune by CD919. And in addition to that, I should also mention, if you guys are gonna upgrade your turbo and do like a hybrid turbo setup like me, make sure that you get a custom tune. You cannot run those on OTS tunes. So just get your tuner lined up if you're gonna go ahead and, and go that route. Back to the steering wheel, I do have the Keys carbon fiber paddles as well, which I think look really good. And then I do have the new wireless charging system System in here which is by JD cars it's called lightning console and it replaces this whole thing and actually charges your phone right there pretty sick I have a video coming out on that if it hasn't already posted you guys will see it radar detector not really a mod but I'm running the Valentine one and then I also have black view dash cam front and back yeah and that's it dude for modifications on the inside I mean that's all my modifications you guys I really haven't done like a whole lot to this car mostly because I don't think you have to like this car with with the power that it's making I'm really really happy with it the headlights I get a lot of people that ask me about my headlights they're stock yeah on the 340s the LCI on the 2016 and up these are the stock lci headlights which look really really good in my opinion they do have retrofit lci like version led headlights for you halogen guys that actually also look pretty good so if you're looking to kind of mimic that style without going to those like chunky weird uh, amazon ones you can get those and they do look rather similar to these but they obviously aren't like full adaptive and all that that is one of my favorite things about the 340s is that they have those lci headlights these lci I headlights like one were one of my favorite things when I had the 328 back in the day I was always so jealous of the guys that had like the LCI trim because these headlights just look a million times better than like the old yellow like just crappy rings so that is what I currently have now we're going to talk about what you can do and how much it could cost you to go this route you don't have to buy all the stuff that I bought in order to have like a 600 wheel horsepower 340 I mean these cars make really really good power pretty effortlessly your most important factors are going to be obviously your turbo and your fueling. I would say fueling first and then turbo. So I'm still on direct injection. I am not on port injection. I'm not running any kind of meth or anything. This is just straight up fuel through the Dorch high pressure fuel pump stage two. I feel like the stage two high pressure fuel pump puts out plenty of fuel and it's super efficient. You really don't need to worry about going too much further unless you're trying to go full frame turbo and really make some big power. But with a car like this, um, I don't really know that this would be the car to try and make a ton of power in being that it's like you know a family sedan and it really does sort of handle like a family sedan i've owned quite a few different cars including like the m2 and my e36 m3 and an e90 m3 all of those cars basically out of the box out handle this car so if you're looking for a car for like really good handling this is definitely not the one for you this is a great street car with a little bit of room in it but don't expect this car to handle like an m car no matter what you do 
I don't care what kind of suspension you put on it. I don't care if you do the F80 control arms, it's not going to handle like an F80 M3. And I think that that's where a lot of people get confused. They ask me like, should I buy, you know, an F80 M3 or an F82 M4 or should I get a 340? Those are two very, very different cars. The F8X platform and the F3X platform are gonna handle and perform entirely differently. Even though you can get good power out of the B58, it doesn't mean that you're gonna be driving a car that is at the level of an M car like an F80. So really what it comes down to is what can you afford and what are you looking to expect out of the car that you buy? I think if you can afford it, I would go for the F80. The reason that I say that is you're just getting more for your money. But let's just say you got a 340 or a B58 and you want it to make, you know, 600-ish wheel horsepower on like an ethanol tune. What would be the easiest way to go about doing that? And I'm gonna tell you right now. All right, so like I said before, get your fueling sorted. There's obviously a bunch of different options in terms of fuel pumps, uh, high pressure fuel pumps. I decided to go with the Dorch high pressure fuel pump stage two because that was recommended to me by a lot of people that I trust. And I've ran Dorch products before and I've never had an issue with them. So I decided to just do it again. This has supplied me with plenty of fuel to make the power that I need and then some. If I were to go to like a full frame turbo, then I would probably end up running like a port injection system in addition to the Dorch Torch stage two. So get your fueling figured out, get yourself a good hybrid turbo. Now the hybrid turbo discussion <laughs> is a tricky one because there are so many companies out there and so many people that claim certain things. I am not getting paid by any of these turbo companies. I am not sponsored by any of these turbo companies. All I can tell you is that I've ran the Pure 800 in my Supra, which I thought was also a really good turbo as far as hybrids are concerned. And now I am running the Daw turbo in this car. I've had zero issues with it and I also think that this is a very good performing turbo. Unfortunately, I have not had enough experience with either of those cars as far as like longevity is concerned to say that one will outlast the other. I can tell you in terms of cost and turnaround, the Daw turbo is going to be more affordable and you're going to be able to get it quicker than the Pure 800 turbo. And for me in particular, when I was shopping for the Supra, it took almost I think seven, eight months to get my turbo for that car. They could have them in stock now it could be an entirely different situation but it was like super easy for me to get this turbo into this car we had it in like a week other than that you're obviously going to need some sort of downpipe now whether you decide to go with a 200 cell like sport cat downpipe or like a full catless downpipe this is obviously going to depend on like where you live and how strict the laws are i prefer having catless just because of the performance benefits out of it as far as the charge pipes are concerned now the stock charge pipes on the b58s are actually like pretty stout you don't have to replace the charge pipe but I still think it's like a good idea to go ahead and do it. There are plenty of companies out there making really good charge pipes that are a little bit more affordable. The Apex built is a little bit more expensive, but I think that what you're paying for is obviously like the quality and the finish of it looks a lot nicer. Same sort of goes with the intake. Obviously, you know, if you're going to be running like a bigger turbo, like a hybrid turbo, you're going to want some sort of aftermarket intake. Um, a drop-in filter and like your stock box is, is not going to cut it. You're going to want some sort of aftermarket an intake and all of them are rather affordable you really don't need to like break the bank to get an intake and it's really not that complex when buying a cold air intake just get the one that you think sounds and looks the best and that you can afford and go from there so fueling hybrid turbo definitely an intake maybe a charge pipe i still think it would be a good idea as far as exhaust you don't really have to get an exhaust on these cars. Again, you're gonna get better flow and efficiency if you do get a full exhaust system. And obviously it's gonna sound a lot sicker too, but I still don't think it's really something that you have to do on these cars in order to reach some decent horsepower numbers. But this is the part where it does get a little more tricky. Now, the thing with tuning and what I have learned about tuning and the conversations of tuning, every person you talk to that has a tune with a certain person is going to claim that their tuner is the best. That is just like the nature of the tuning community. I've worked with a lot of tuners, a lot of the bigger names, some unknown people. I look for a few things when it comes to tuning with people. Response time, support, and street ability. I've never been fond of working with tuners that are just want to throw it on a dyno and get a certain number. Not saying that I know any tuners like that or that I've worked with tuners like that, but I have seen that before where tuners are all just about getting certain numbers on a dyno. I think that that is a very, very bad idea. In my opinion, you should be tuning on the street and and then finish up on a dyno and dial stuff in 
or vice versa, as long as you're doing both. I think doing both is really important. So as I said before, I am tuned on MHD with CD919, which is a custom tune. I have two maps, 93 octane, and my E50 blend tune, which I run like 90% of the time. We tuned this car on the street. It took us about, I'd say like a week to finish both maps. We were logging a lot, like every single day. I would be going out in the mornings, doing logs and then sending them over to Chris. And by the time I got home, I would have a new file in my email. That's how quick he was. So I really liked that about Chris. There was like no lag time. We were just constantly improving the map and constantly improving the tune. And right from the jump, there weren't any weird issues when we were tuning. The car was always driving really well. There was no strange misfires or rough idles. Streetability is so important and I think a lot of people leave that off the table and they focus just like on how fast the car is. You're not racing all the time. You're not racing when you're just driving your car around. You want to make sure that the car drives well. Once you know that the car is driving well, you can focus a little more on the performance side of things, but I noticed it almost immediately this car was driving phenomenally. One platform that a lot of people talk about is Ecutech. I think Ecutech is a really good platform. It is a bit proprietary, whereas like you can only work with Ecutech tuners on that platform. And I did drive a couple of cars running Ecutech and they felt really good. They also drove very smooth. So again, drivability in my opinion is like number one and then focus on performance. We were also focusing more on like actual street times, like quarter mile, zero to 60, 60 to 130, stuff like that, rather than just like dyno numbers. And then when we went to the dyno, we were pleasantly surprised when we saw that we made 620 wheel horsepower and like 580 something pound feet of torque. But that number is really just like a flex, you know, for people. I'd much rather see what the street numbers look like and the actual performance numbers in the street. This car currently is right around like mid 10 seconds. So yeah, you guys, that's my quick take on the car. Um, just kind of everything we've done so far. I did put together a quick cost of like what it would take to build a car. Not like all the wheels and suspension and all that stuff, but if you just wanted to do performance, if you just wanted to go out and like buy a 340 BMW and then just build it so it had 600 wheel horsepower, but like nothing else mattered. It was just like a sleeper. It looked completely stock, but it made 600 wheel horsepower. You could do it for right around like $5,000. Now that wasn't including like labor and stuff. So if you work on your own car, obviously you're gonna save a little bit of cash there. If not, I would say probably add on like a thousand, 1500 extra. So yeah, for about like $5,000 in modifications, you could have 600 wheel horsepower. Obviously it wouldn't look like this. You'd have to spend a little bit more and hopefully that explains some things and hopefully I helped you guys out. If you guys have anything that you want to add, of course, throw it down in the comments. But as always, we're going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys for watching. Love you. See you in the next one. Peace.